Welcome to CIPT2 from CBT Nuggets. My name is Jeremy Chara, and I'll be hanging out with you throughout this series and talking with you as we dive in depth as to what Call Manager, or Cisco Unified Communication Manager, the name I will never get used to saying, is used for as we move into a multi-site, uh, secured, feature-rific environment. Now, what I wanted to do in this initial nugget as we open the entire series is just get you prepared for what this is going to be like, what Cisco certification is all about as it relates to the CCVP, and, and really just how you can get the most from this series. Well, let me start things off by talking about Cisco certifications. And I know not everybody is interested in Cisco certifications, and a lot of you may be looking at this because you have Call Manager in the real world. But please, before you fast forward, hang on, don't, <laughs> don't touch that mouse. Uh, before, you, before you fast forward, let me just take a couple minutes to talk about why I think Cisco certification is awesome. Um, I, I got into the certification world probably about 13 years ago now, not even in Cisco. It was in uh, Microsoft, Windows NT. And uh, I, was, I was learning that and studying for these certification exams simply because uh, I was in a world of hardware. I, my, my job at the time was building computers uh, on an assembly line kind of thing, and I was just kind of burning out on it. I thought, oh, there's got to be something better. So I went into the certification world, and I was just blown away. I was like, this is awesome. Not so much the certifications, but the technology. And I thought, well, if I can get certified and get a job, doing this. This would be great. Um, and somewhere in, in that, that process, I got interested in teaching and, and went a, a whole different route. But I started off getting my MCSE in Windows NT. And back then, you know, I was interested in teaching. That pretty much got me a teaching job. But getting an MCSE, you get a certificate in the mail and you get a, a little laminated card that said, I'm an MCSE. Oh, and you get some logos. You can put logos on your resume. And that was it, you know, and it, so you get your MCSE and it's up to you to now go find a job with that. I, I then got certified in Novell, uh, because back then Novell was a big deal, and, and taught Novell and things like that. And I got my CNE, Certified Novell Engineer, in Netware 4 and 5. And uh, I got the same thing, certificate, business card, you can use our logos and go find a job. But when I got into Cisco around 2000, uh, Cisco not only gave me the certificate and all that, but they said, oh, by the way, we also incent companies to hire you. Meaning, they, they go out to companies and said, if you hire Cisco certified people, you can move up in your partner level with Cisco, thus getting larger discounts on Cisco equipment. So now, companies are not only uh, wanting you to get certified because it shows you know what you you're doing, but it also is a benefit to them that they can move up to a, a silver or a platinum or a gold or all the different levels of, of partner levels with Cisco and get just huge discounts on Cisco equipment. So unlike any of the other certifications, I found when I, I got Cisco certified, companies were looking for me. Now, I want to make sure I state this correctly. I didn't come home with my CCNA and get a phone call and say, hey, you've got a job at uh, Merrill Lynch, you know, anytime you want to, you know, there was nothing like that. It, you know, I got my CCIE and they, there was no phone calls ringing or anything like that. But I will tell you, when you go out for, res for interviews, when you go out uh, for job hunting, you will find far more listings saying CCNA required, CCNP required, or CCIE required to get this job because people know that you really have to know your stuff and they're going to get a huge benefit from an employee having those certifications. So, so okay, if that, you know, and, and I'll say in this economy, and, uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm speaking in 2010 here, um, but in this economy, uh, there's nothing better that you can do for, for your career than to have something else that can put you above, you know, another candidate coming in for a job, and certification is huge. So if, if I have not convinced you, then go, okay, okay, you can fast forward. I allow you now. Uh, but let me just talk briefly about the Cisco certification track. Um, starting with, and I'll, again, I'll, I'm going to do the flyby. You all begin right here, CCNT, moving to the CCNA. And I'm assuming you, you would have had the equivalent knowledge by the time you get here, unless you're focused solely on call manager. And that's okay, too. Where there's not hardly, well, there, there's some, but there's hardly anything at all that we're going to be doing on gateways and switches and things like that uh, in this series because it's all a call manager focus. But once you have your CCNA, you can move in the direction of the voice track. Now, it all starts off with CCNA Voice, which is currently, and I can say this is the beginning of 2010, uh, focused on Call Manager Express or Cisco Unified Communication Manager Express, which is essentially Call Manager running on a router for a small uh, business environment. Um, but things are changing. Uh, and I'll, I'll just say I 
things are changing. Things are always changing under certification tracks, and I'm trying to think how much I can disclose because they haven't changed yet. But by the time you hear this, maybe they have. And that CCNA voice may be changed to something different, very different <laughs> than what it is right now. So the reason I, I mention that is right now there's a big confusion with the CCVP, CCVP track because there's these two flavors of CCVP that you can get. There's the commercial flavor, which is five exams, and then you are required to get the CCNA voice. And then there's the enterprise, which is also five exams, but you're not required to get the CCNA voice. So it's, yeah, and I know you're probably going, huh? Yeah, that's about what everybody else says right now. They're going, so, so if I get a CCVP enterprise, I can skip the CCNA voice. And right now Cisco would say, uh-huh, that's correct. And people would say, well, but why? And, and Cisco would reply and say, well, because you're an enterprise client, you wouldn't have any reason to learn Call Manager Express. So you can focus on CCVP Enterprise and just learn, you know, all Call Manager and all that kind of stuff. And, and people would say, okay, well, so if I get a CC in a commercial, then I have to know everything the enterprise guys have to know, right? And Cisco would say, yeah. <laughs> and she would say, but, but I'm required to get a CCNA to get that. And Cisco would say, yes. And that, that would be about the end of the conversation. So you can see there's just a ton of confusion around why you would do either one. And, and that's been going on for years. It's been that way um, that Cisco ha had had this. But I will say right now, things, they are changing as they always do in Cisco's certification realm. You may see either by time you, you uh, get this, this series or shortly thereafter, or maybe, maybe somewhere around mid-2010, you may find out there are some changes that eliminate a lot, in, a, a lot of that confusion. And that's, that's about all I can say on that. But nonetheless, within those five exams, let me focus on the CCVP, uh, there are C-Voice, which is, I would say, the prerequisite for this, but not really. C <laughs> Every, everything I say is like, well, yeah, kind of, sort of. It depends. That's the ultimate. You can answer any question with the, with the uh, answer. It depends. Uh, so C voice is the prerequisite, kind of. Uh, and I say that because it depends on if you are focused on gateways and routers and integrating with the PSTN and, and the, the PBX closely working with uh, PSTN carriers and all that kind of stuff. That's what C voice is all about. But a lot of people skip over that I've found because their sole focus is call manager and that's where they focus in on CIPT1 and CIPT2. CIPT1 I would definitely say is a prerequisite because I'm going to assume by the time we step into this series you know what call manager is all about. You know how to configure phones. You know how to uh, what what route plan basics are all about and, and I'm going to review a lot of that because I'm sure it's been a while for some of you but there is a lot of assumptions I'm going to make. Now if you have not had CIPT1 and you get here will you be able to follow along? Eh, probably. I'd say so. I, I always try and explain things as if you're coming in with, with very, very little prerequisite knowledge. And if there's anything I need to review, I'll, I'll try and do it in a flyby sense. So I think you'll be okay. But I would say to get the most of this series, which is why I'm talking to you right now, I'd really suggest you check out CIPT1 first. I mean, just, just the name alone. It's kind of like, it's like watching The Matrix. If you watch The Matrix Reloaded before you've seen The Matrix Part 1, it's kind of like, why would you do that? <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what this is all about. Um, so from there, uh, quality of service is definitely a must. You want to make sure you have that uh, to make sure the voice, tr uh, the voice gets prioritized over the data. And then the final piece is troubleshooting troubleshooting unified communications. Um, those are the five exams. You, you, you pass all those and now you have a ticket uh, into the, the CCVP world and you're, you know, I would say you're pretty studied up to start moving into the CCIE voice uh, certification exam if that's your focus. Now before I leave this, you can see all the stats below. Statistically, most people go after CCNP first. Uh, likewise, these things last for three years, but keep in mind Cisco's renewal policy is amazing to where, let's say you get your, your CCVP, it's going to last for three Three years. If you just you know pass the written exam for this one or one of the CCNP or CCSP exams, it automatically renews this for three more years. So you, I mean, you get a fresh three years start on that. So Cisco, their goal is not to make you take the same exams again and again and again as your expiration comes up. They consider if you are studying for other things that are either equal to or more advanced than the level of CCVP, then then we'll renew that for you. It's, it's awesome. So, you know, I, I can say if it wasn't, I, I currently have uh, the CCVP, CCNP, and CCSP, and a CCIE in routing and switching. Um, if, if they did not have this policy, I would have to take, what, 15, 16 different exams every 
three years, forget it. I would I would be losing them left and right. So so what I do every every two years because the CCIE needs to be renewed every two. I pass the written for this, and it automatically renews all of these. And I also have some of the design certs and things like that. All of those uh, for three more years beyond that. So their renewal policy is awesome. So all of that is is just a broad overview of the certification program. Of course, this series matches directly up to the exam objectives for CIPT2. Um, so you can, you know, you can use this as definitely a study aid, but keep in mind I I love Cisco's certification exams because they are so real world. I don't like teaching to an exam to where it, it makes for a very dull time if every two seconds I'm saying, oh yeah, for the exam you might want to highlight this or know that or oh yeah, you want to look here. So so the way the way that I teach and I, I talk to you as we go through this series is like you and I are just sitting here configuring a call manager <laughs> and we're doing it in a multi-site environment and we got to do a lot of advanced stuff. That's my focus as we go through it. Every now and then I might say, oh yeah, you know, you might want to know this if you're studying for the exam, but, but for the most part, this is all real world. And by knowing the real world, you'll be prepared for the certification exam. All right. Let me finally wrap up by talking about how you can get the most from this series. First and foremost, a huge advantage of CBT Nuggets is the repetition capability. Uh, rep repetition, repetition, repetition. If you just hear something once, uh, statistically, scientifically shown, within two weeks you've forgotten about 90% of what you've heard. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? You just remember, that's <laughs> totally disheartening to somebody like me whose career it is to talk and, and, and talk about all this kind of stuff. But if you hear it again and again and again, if you hear, and I, I know you, you would not do this, but scientifically it says if you hear something, six times you, know, you repeat something six times it's good at least in your mind for one to two years um, now don't don't listen to me six times I, I would get sick of me well maybe you want to I don't know <laughs> but I would get tired of listening to me I get tired of anyway I'm tired of talking about that so repetition is is a huge a huge part of what you want to do with CBT nuggets you can listen to concepts you know specific pieces again and again and again especially now oh man CBT nuggets has an iPhone application an iPad application droid applications all these things to where you can listen to them on the go. Seriously, and I, I think I mentioned this uh, later on in the series, it's kind of scary, but I am constantly listening to CBT Nuggets, trying not to watch it, but listening to it as I drive um, on my iPhone, you know, learning, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to keep up with a lot of the Microsoft stuff that I get uh, passed by on like Exchange and things like that. And it's just, it's just fun. It's, it's very cool to be able to uh, do that on the go because, you know, think of all the, the wasted time driving that you could just be learning stuff. So anyhow. <laughs> no, don't do the second one while driving. Take notes. Write things down. Meaning, as you're going through the series, it's always good to, you know, involve multiple modalities of doing things. And that's, you know, jot some stuff down. And, and uh, you know, as I bring up a key point, jot that down. You know, make a note. How would I do that? How could I do that? And I would say the best thing, the best thing that you could do is the third one. Build a lab. This goes right along with, you know, writing stuff down because... To add one more piece, to actually try things as, uh, as you go um, is, is great. And I will say, unlike any of the other Cisco uh, topics I talk about, you can probably build a call manager lab cheaper than anything. Uh, first things first, you can start off uh, building a VMware server using ESX or ESXi. ESXi is free. Now, if you haven't had any experience with VMware, they have two products that I would highly recommend to you. Uh, ESXi and VMware Server. Both of them are free products. Uh, ESXi is where you have a dedicated server where you can bring up these virtual machines, kind of like a virtual environment, great for labs and stuff like that, um, on a dedicated server. Now I realize that not everybody has a dedicated server um, sitting around. <laughs> it's funny, I turn around because I'm like, where's my dedicated server? And I see, not, I, I see my dedicated server sitting over here, but I have three other servers just sitting beside them, just waiting to be used. And I'm like, oh, I should, I should set those up. Um, but, uh, but nonetheless, not everybody has just a server sitting around. So that's why you have this VMware server product. Uh, that allows you to essentially do VMware, do virtual machines on your own PC. You, you can use Windows, Windows XP, Windows, Windows Vista, Windows 7, you know, set up Linux, you know, set up VMware server running on top of it and run call manager inside of that. Now, some of you might say, well, where do I get call manager? <clears throat> 
eBay <laughs> or something to that nature. The software, Cisco says, you know what, for a lab environment, we totally understand. They actually give you free licenses uh, or uh, in, I shouldn't say free licenses, but an unlicensed version of Call Manager can support. <laughs>